So shows are not the same, and emotions are not the same every day. Every day you come in with a different emotion. He allowed us. He said to us, let it be. Every day, come in and do how you feel. Um, my name is Freddie Opoku Adair, Artistic Director and Chief Executive at Dance Umbrella Festival. Um, the show you've just seen, which is a part of. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Buru, Co-Director and Artistic Director of Via Long. And Longile, one of the performing artists you've just seen on stage. Thank you. I'm going to say this. My mum always says this after the 100 meters dash that they never give the person enough time to relax, to catch the breath before they start interviewing them. So I'm going to let Longile rest for a bit. Yeah, just catch her breath a bit. Yeah. So I'm going to go straight to Buru. Um, so we had Via Cat along with us 2018 as part of our 40th anniversary in Dance Umbrella at Shoreditch Town Hall with a choreographer, Gregory Mokoma. Um, we presented a work. And th so this is the second time the company's come to the festival, and this is their debut on the Sadler's World's main stage. So let's give it up for that as well. Thanks, Sadler's. <laughs> so the first question, via Catalog, how did the company come about? Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> And thank you for coming today. It means a lot. Yes. Um, Via Catalong Company, um, it's a very special uh, company which uh, was formed in 1992 by four street dancers in Catalong. So Catalong, it's in Johannesburg, but in the east side of Johannesburg. And the name of our township is Catalong. That means uh, the name of our company, it was named after our township. So Katlehong, it's, um, it's a very uh, strong um, a township that has a good history and a very, very strong history, especially during the late uh, 80s and the uh, early 90s, which there was lots of violences were happening in our street. That means there was a lot of bad energy that was happening in our township. So it was found in 1992. Their aim was to take the kids away from the criminal offenses because of many young people were affected by those violences in our township. So the, the violences were caused by the message were sent to the people from the old government to create the conflict so now um, it happens that I'm one of those kids who were taken away from the streets as the second generation of Vaya Katlong in 1996. Uh, Vaya Katlong uh, uh, played a very important role in our township and the country in large. So we're specializing uh, with the Pansula dance, the dance that you saw here, and we're also uh, specializing with the Gamput dance. These two dance forms are very strong dance forms. So the Pansula dance, it's, it's, it's the one that uh, you saw many times here, which there's a magical footwork, and also shouting and very strong, very aggressively. So this dance form, they are not taken seriously as professional uh, dance forms. But Vaya Katlehong, it's the first generation that took this dance to the world since <laughs> <laughs> so uh, through those uh, experiences, uh, we got uh, lots of opportunities to create many different uh, shows which were successfully around the world. We also invited uh, different choreographers like Robin Olin, uh, Christian Rizzo, and then uh, we also invited Gregory Makoma, which the show, it went to Dance Umbrella. And uh, now, um, after the COVID, we sat down and then we wanted to, for, for this project specifically, it never started with Amala and Marco. So it started with uh, Osman Sai, a very strong guy, very tall. <laughs> so uh, he had, uh, we proposed to him and then he had uh, many great ideas to bring dance, just for us to dance uh, with lots of energy and so on. 
but uh, it happens that when we were supposed to create the show, then Osman Sai died. Then may his uh, soul rest in peace. And then we decided to invite Amala and Marco. This is the world uh, this, they, they created here. They created a beautiful uh, show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you've partly answered my second part question, which was how did the choreographers come about? But the process, and I'm not going to try and do the move, but I remember there's a line in the piece about um, um, Amala came with this move. What did Marco come with first into the studio when you invited him to come and work at the company? <laughs> okay. What was the process like with both choreographers? Because I know they're both drawing from urban folk dance styles as well, so also to work with a company. What was the process like? Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Lungi. Um, firstly, I'd like to start by saying the process was very intriguing because um, we are all different dancers. Some specialize in contemporary and some specialize in bantula. So now having to come together to collaborate with them was a bit tricky. Um, but we had to find ground. So I think we found a lot of ground in our synopsis, understanding, because both um, pieces are a pandemic, you know? And if I'm to elaborate further on that, is form and form is the first piece, is Marco's piece, which is what artists um, incur internally. So as artists, there's things we go through politically as well. So hence the opening of the white mat. So, but now we had to put it in an abstract form that it cannot always be emotional. There's humor in a lot of things, you know? And via Emma Pacatini, which is Amala's piece, came about, now how do we celebrate after all these scars that we have dealt with, after having to give the audience so much to see? Because there's puppetry, you know, there's people wearing masks. It's quite a lot emotionally as well, besides physically. So now how do we come about and celebrate as Africans, South Africans? more especially, and that's how the Amapiano, the Fantula, that second piece is mostly about energy, it's mostly, you know, it's very impulsive, it's about celebration, it's about saying, phew, we've done this. Yeah. Thank you, and I definitely get the vibe. As we <laughs> say, we get the vibes, we get the vibes. I'm already gonna open up, guys. So, any questions? Go for it. I'm just, I'm just gonna repeat the question. So, firstly, it was just to, give her thanks for the performance and she definitely felt the presence and the celebration of what the, was on stage. And the second part was a question about how does it feel for you being inside the work and having to deal with the process of that as well. I'll start with the second one, mainly because we sometimes get lost in celebration, celebratory moments. Um, sometimes you'll find yourself celebrating because other peers are celebrating and probably just by being there could help someone else. So shows are not the same, and emotions are not the same every day. Every day you come in with a different emotion. Today I don't feel like drinking, I just wanna go and listen to the music. Today I just feel like dancing, but today, you know? So that also, he allowed us, he said to us, let it be, every day come in and do how you feel. The second piece, the first piece, is quite tricky because it's very abstract, meaning it's focused. However, with your emotions, they won't be the same as well. So meaning, the movements are allowed to change to a certain point to fit the character of the day. But there has to be, there's a bit of discipline with the first one rather than the second one because it's very focused, it's audience focused more than internally focused with each other. Thank you. Questions? Yes, go. <laughs> I'll just repeat the question. So um, the question was, how much of it was improvised and how much of it was actually set choreography, I would say. And the uh, intermission, interval, yeah. <laughs> but how much, yeah, what was that um, process in that? Ooh, my colleagues will kill me on this one. I'm selling them out. <laughs> it's only, it's between us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so I would say 60%. And that's, I'm being genuine, it was 60% because, yeah, some things internally, but it was 60%, simply because the, we were not really, there were just different emotions going on in the cast as well. So I'd say, in the the sorry, is that in the first piece? Or no, the second piece. The second piece. No, the first piece was set. 
there was no improvising. But the second one, yeah. Also the intermission. And that drives the whole show. So having to improvise from intermission, now we have to think ahead. That there's probably missing spots that we'll have to fill in. And that also goes with teamwork. Like we have to always be on the watch. That, okay, is he gonna try something new? Is she gonna try something new? How do I blend and how do I gel? So there we have to catch each other's energy. So I'd say 60% to answer your question. <laughs> We've got one here and then one behind. So the question was, what was the aim and the mission and we want, and the company wants people to go away or the feeling pe they want people to go away with? <laughs> I love that question. I love that question and I think we face such a challenge every day, you know? Um, However, I think today as a team, the mission was to make people happy with our bodies, honestly. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. And that's why 60% of it was improvised, because we had to. <laughs> Thank you. And quest yep, it was, you had your hand up, yep. And so the question is, um, when Buru talked about being in the ACAT long and trying to take the kids away from the violence, um, the question is, how is it now in the present day? Uh, yeah, that's a very important one, yes. Um, it, it, the, the organization actually played a, a very important role. Uh, today, we have uh, many young um, artists who are traveling uh, the world. We've got uh, artists who are very uh, independent and they're having their own uh, uh, projects that they are doing and um, each time we bring uh, new artists and then there's also old artists which we are using. So uh, via Katlehong, when we started it, it was a collective work as the community youth organization. But now it's a company that works uh, with everyone. So the situation I can say it's, it's, it's changed a lot because of even in our township, we are celebrating, um, uh, we are promoting the tourism because before there were not uh, tourists who are coming to our township because of it was known as one of the dangerous uh, townships. But now we've got, uh, we've got friends, families who are coming to visit us all over the world. So it brought uh, change into our community. And even now, the experience that we are having, it's not just an experience, but it's a responsibility mm -hmm that the next generation, what is it that we need to pay for them? Remember, uh, the dance form that we, we, we are specializing with, it's a dance form that it's not taken seriously as a professional dance form. So that is why as a Via K today, we have a dream of having a Pansula Academy so that the next generation can also have the academic uh, background in terms of the Pansula uh, technique. Thank you. That was a fast hand in the middle. So the question was, who are your inspirations? <coughs> okay. <laughs> okay, mine is a bit drifted off. Mine, because I'm very contemporary based. So mine is Akram Khan. <laughs> um, on my side, um, the, my inspiration, it's, it's uh, the artist that comes from the streets, especially the hip hop side and the Pansula side. So my inspiration is Masapo. I, I'm not sure you don't, it's one of uh, the guys who have found this organization. Thank you. One last question. <laughs> oh, beautiful, oh, beautiful moment. That was just beautifully raised there. Go for it. <laughs> um, so the question was, who was the DJ in Amala's piece, the second piece? Yes. Okay. Um, his name is uh, Tato Kofela. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that one. <laughs> Let's try it one. <laughs> Once again. It's Tato Kofela. <laughs> 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 um, I would love to continue this, but we can also touch base with a company that will be around. Um, I just want to say huge, huge thank you to Sadler's for bringing this company into this wonderful stage. Thank yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
takes a lot of effort and teamwork to do this. Thank you. And I also want to say a big thank you to the Dance Umbrella team for putting this festival together. Buru and Ongile, thank you both. But I know we've got another show tomorrow, so thank you. It was stunning, and I know it's also going to be amazing tomorrow. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>